بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على شمس الهداية واليقين حبيبنا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين صدق الله العظيم Beloved children, sisters and brothers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an open declaration to Muhammadur Rasulullah concerning his glory and concerning his greatness. He tells the Nabi, O oh Muhammad, my beloved, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy unto the entire creation, to the entire existence, to the birds and the bees and the valleys and the seas, to every particle on earth, Muhammadur Rasulullah is a mercy. Allah is its creator, its nourisher, its cherisher. cherisher. Allah is Rabbul Alameen and Muhammad is Rahmatul Lil Alameen. is a mercy. So his mercy touches every particle in existence, every atom in existence. Allah has sent him as such. And anyone who comes in touch and is conversant or hears the name of Muhammad or the stories and the narratives about Muhammad Rasulullah has got mercy descending upon him because Muhammad is the mercy unto entire existence. Sallallahu we who are his followers are supposed to follow him and the first thing we have to follow him the greatest sunnah of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to be merciful each one of us is a miniature mercy unto the entire creation because we are belong to Muhammad we are Mustafawi we belong to Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as such, as the world has seen that he is the best and the greatest, they must see us because they are all miniature in whatever they are. If we are miniature rahmatul alameen, they must be able to see those qualities of Muhammad Rasulullah in us. Otherwise, all the other sunnahs are by the way because the greatest tribute that Allah pays to his Nabi is وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ and we don't go for anything second and third or fifteenth we go for the best and we have to be rahmat we have to be mercy and grace and we have to be loving and kind. So now what has happened? This is Rasulullah. Lamatin said in 1830, if you know how to calculate, calculate when, in his history of the Turks, and he talks about our Nabi. He says, if, if greatness of purpose and smallness of means and astounding results are the three standards of judgment of human greatness, then who in history can 
compare anyone with Muhammad. 1830. Today, others have also said the similar things, but 1830, he looked at the life of Rasulullah. He looked at everybody's life. His own so called God, Isa. He says, No, who in history can compare with Muhammad? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's that great and so on. And we have him, the best leader. The best leader. And what are we? We have been made leaders. The Quran gives us this great honor, this great respect. Says, Kuntum khaira ummatin ufrijat linnas. You are the best of all nations and peoples that have been evolved to serve mankind. Ta'muroon na bil ma'roof. You are always enjoining that which is good, that which is merciful, that which, which is beneficial. وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ munkar, And you stop everyone, first yourselves, from that which is harmful that which is abominable and disliked. <coughs> Not haram, haram is worse than that. That means even the small things that we see are wrong. But then how na anil munkar? That is what we are supposed to do. Even if you see a chap, you know, usually we've got our friends who have come from somewhere, they pachak the pan, pachak, pachak, pachak. They die in the streets. That's munkar. And we don't tell them, but then how na brother? This is not right. Our Rasul had two pieces of cloth. One to wipe himself, the other to take out whatever object he wanted to take out from his mouth. We had two. We don't, you know, the walls are already painted. You have, don't have to paint them all over again, my brother, please. You have to tell them that because they have to listen because this is, Allah says, تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ Haram is great, of course, Haram you have to stop also. It's a greater force, but munkar. Therefore, the Nabi said one thing to a Muslim, and this is his hallmark. Man ra'a minkum munkaran, fal yugayirhu bi yadi. Wa illam yastatik, fa bi lisanihi. Wa illam yastatik, fa bi qalbihi. Wa dalika ad'afu iman. He who sees anything that is abominable, Haram is very big. But anything that you see is unsightly and wrong and dirty and filthy, even if it doesn't, doesn't touch you, but it is harming anybody, you have to change it with your hands. If you go to the toilet and find it in a mess, you pull the chain and see how you can clean it yourself with your own hands, imagine. Because you leave, a Muslim leaves any place better than he found it. That is a Muslim. So unfortunately, some of our guys can't be bothered what they do. And if we can use our muscle and strength and strength to clean it, we do it. So far you will be here. If somebody is harming somebody, stop it with your hands, stop it. If somebody is bullying somebody, somebody is exploiting somebody, stop it with your hands. Wa stop it. For the at least if you can't then articulate, open your mouth and say, but this is wrong man. Mouth, you know, because you're so big, you give me one now and fall. Please, brother. And you can articulate by writing. You get so many letters against Islam and so on in the newspapers and other places. We can write, but we will rather write, you know, on the Facebook and the Twitter and the Glitter. That's, but why don't you write where it's supposed to go? Write to go. That is like speaking. Then that is like your tongue is talking. And if you can't even do that, if you see something that you can't put right yourself, you are too weak, at least you must say, this is wrong. Don't accept any type of customs which are useless and say, no, and uh, no, it's happening, say, it's all right. No, it is wrong. So that you protest in your heart so that you become strong enough to open your mouth and you become strong enough to say stop. That is a Muslim's hallmark. That is what our Nabi made out of us. That is what he did and that is his sunnah. 
We talk about sunnah, 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 and we get a guy with the right type of paraphernalia, the right size of facial hair, and pacha, pacha on the wall and everywhere else. That's not sunnah. That's not sunnah. Sunnah are such beautiful and graceful things in life. But what do we find all around us? What type of sunnah are we prepared to follow? The sunnah of Muhammad Rasulullah or the sunnah of Abu Lahab? Is it we are Mustafawi or are we Bu Lahabi? What, what do we do? All this fan play. We find in the Muslim world today, I mean those who were able to see the arrival of the new year and throughout the world we found our Muslims Burj Al Khalifa in the Middle East around the Kaaba tens of millions spent on fireworks in dust and look around there in Somalia that emaciated child the mother is trying to feed it last few hours left for the child to leave this world and we are burning everything up in smoke that's the ummah of Muhammad Rasul. And nobody says that in the ulama they don't say stop it. They don't say. Because most of them nowadays, professional clerics, rented ulama. Foremost amongst them now you can see is in Egypt, a guy by the name of Ahmad Tayyib, he's supposed to be Sheikh al Azhar. Doesn't say a word to Sisi. Now that's a Sisi, man. Tell him something. Stop it. Sisi means a pony, you know. He's taking everybody for a ride. On his world pony, small, short, little pony. His sissy. Stop him. The army must say, kill me. The greatest jihad is to say the truth to a ruler who is unjust. That is the greatest jihad. And the ulama are supposed to lead us in that. But the ulama rubber stand. In Urdu and Gujarati, they will say, Jiska khaye, uska gaye. The one who feeds you. You sing his praise. He feeds you. Nobody else feeds you. You can have the best food here, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shuts you up. You have to be fed through your veins, and that also weighs rejected. He is the one who feeds you. He is our Raza to Dun Ku Ku Watin He is the one who feeds you and sustains you. But we are afraid. Just to say something we are afraid. And Allah tells us. Don't be afraid of them. Who are they? Allah is talking to you and you and you. Allah is talking. Don't be afraid of them. But be afraid of me and be conscious of me. Don't. Who are they? Allah says. Do you believe in him? Are you prepared to say it? Am I prepared to say it? And I prepared to say it? Are the ulama of the world prepared to say it? Nothing. Nothing. Why? It will harm our income. It will harm our popularity. We will be on the blacklist and so on. So what? Allah must not blacklist you. Let the world blacklist you. Your, your books must be in the best condition before Him. And He's looking at you now, 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 now. As you are breathing, He is giving you that breath. And he's watching you and he's watching your deeds in Narabakala Bil Mirsad. Your Lord is ever observing you. Every little movement that you are making, the slightest atom that is moved, he knows. He who does an atom weight of good, he will have his reward for it and he who does an act of weight of evil will have to answer for it. That is our Allah Now we find in our Muslim world people next to us are dying. We have big, big conferences and have big books written how Muslims must think and all as if they are blind, you know. When you look at CNN, you look at Al Jazeera, you find the Muslims, leave alone the Muslims, humanity, you are you are miniature rahmatul lil alameen, you don't care about Muslim, non-Muslim, anyone. You see that emaciated child in Darfur, 
you find the emaciated child in India, in Pakistan. You find that a wedding party is going and Obama, the black man in the White House, is sending his drones to kill little, little children and women. We say nothing, nothing. We don't even say in our heart, eh? I'm all right, Jack. I said, I'm all right, I'm all right. So what, let them die. Muslim is not dead. If you are following the sunnah of Muhammadur Rasulullah, you are a miniature rahmatun lil alameen. You are a miniature mercy unto the entire creation and to the whole of mankind, peace, birth, and environment, and everything around you. But no, we haven't taken on this challenge. We have come in passengers, you know. I, my father was Muslim, you know. My grandfather also, alhamdulillah. You are supposed to be Muslim, not them. They are paying for whatever they did and they are being accounted for. You are supposed to be counted now. Make yourself what you are supposed to be and I am supposed to be. So this is what it has become, as if it's a holiday that we have come accidentally. I'm aware by, I am an Islam, I'm a Muslim man, you know. Jannah belongs to me, it doesn't even belong to my father or grandfather. That belongs to me, you know. You have to work for your chance. Now we're going to see now, in a few years' time, the one of the richest countries in the world is going to have the World Cup. The World Cup. And it's going to cost them billions and billions. And all around them, you'll find people are dying. People are hungry. And who? Muslims mostly, unfortunately. Look in the map. Look in at your televisions if you have and see the first few news items are Muslims who are in trouble not interested World Cup we're going to go and we're going to do everything for kicks yes you will get a kick out of it and Allah will kick you out you get a kick out of it but he'll kick you out you are nobody man never mind how big your name is Khalifa, Khalifa or whatever it is you, you own this, this uh, billions barrels of oil, that same oil will burst under your feet and you'll be roasted. The same Burj Al Khalifa. You think the tsunami can't come there and take the whole Burj away? Allah says, أَيْنَمَا تَكُونُوا يُدْرِكُمُ الْمَوْتِ وَلَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُرْجٍ مُشَيَّدًا You think that you are safe? Wherever you are, that will get hold of you, even if you are in the highest Buruj, not even Buruj al Khalifa and Buruj, whatever, al Arab or whatever it is, Allah will get you. And what is a tsunami for Allah? Kun Fayakun. Did you ever see the Victoria Falls is ice down? You know, this morning's paper, the Times, full page, ice, the you Victoria know, Falls is not falling anymore, it's ice. Biggest falls in the world. It doesn't fall today. That's Allah. It's not you. That's not me. He does it. He's telling you. Who are you? Who am I? Yes, we will spend billions and billions for ourselves. You know, the greatest thing in life, really, as my Nabi taught us, is that he will get hold of a yatim and own him, and he will bring him to his side, and that yatim will smile. Nothing in the world is better than that smile of the Jati. Nothing. Nothing. And that you know, we thought you bring smile in the faces of others. Feed them when they are hungry and protect them when they are being troubled and oppressed. Might not be talking about, but no, we got a better thing to do, you know. We are going to see how so Schumacher's shoe is thinking or not after he fell on his head and is nearly dead. But let's be interested in Shumar. Be afraid of Allah. Look at Muhammad Rasul. Look at his life. Become like him. We, it's easy to make milad and all the rest of it. But we say, Ya Rasulullah, we want this. Yes, Rasulullah has given you everything. Tell me what he hasn't given you. Stand up if you've got the guts and I've got the guts. Given you everything, he has done everything for you. What have you done for him? What have you done for Muhammad Rasulullah? Have you even told the people that Muhammad is our fire, final Nabi? And he told us, anni walau ayah. And 
talk about me and propagate about me even if you know one line. What is the most important line he taught the Muslims and the world? La ilaha illallah. There is no object of worship except Allah. Everybody knows. We call, we call it awal kalima. Kalima shahad. Everybody have we taken this message to tell the mushrik there's only one God, there's only one God, nothing. What have we done for him? And then we accept Allah must tell, hey, you know we are Muslims, Allah, you owe us, come on, give us. We need this. Yes, he has given you. He's given you those people in the Emirates. He's given the Saudis, everybody. Now instead of embellishing the Kaaba, they got a big clock there. You know why? They want to see how the time is running out for them. And they watch it every minute. Time is running out. That is why. Why do you look at time? It's running out. Yes, good, it's there. It's not supposed to be there. But they're looking at the time all the time. Because they know that time is running out for them. Every second, every minute, every hour, they are out. And the worst people on earth, on the, on the denizen of the of the denizen of the earth are those who say they are our leaders and they read the Quran and they read it wrong. You try to say that you must, well, amri minkum, your leaders you must follow. But the leaders must be muttaqeen, salihin, following the leadership of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We had a leader here who passed away and we can well ask, you know, on a leadership level, the Nabi, when he came, the Muslims were poor. When he left, were they poor? The Nabi, when he came, came they were all drunkards. Were they drunkards? No. Everybody was stealing and, and having a field time exploiting. And there was slavery and exploitation. When he left, was it like that? No. That is leadership. Anybody who fits into that mode of leadership, for a Muslim at least, this is the le universal leadership, but for a Muslim, if he hasn't done that, he can't be a leader. Can't be a leader. When you die, you don't leave squatter camps, you don't leave this, you leave everybody in a state. During the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the Khalif, Muslims could not even find people to give the zakat. They had to give it to non-Muslims. That means it was prosperous. So leadership leads to prosperity. <coughs> we know that we have got wrong leaders. We've got, we've got the wrong direction. Instead of the black house, we face to the white house in America, in Washington. That is what we have done. So we have to go in the wrong direction and meet our doom if we want to. But we can change all that by making Muhammad Rasulullah our leader. He is the best leader. There is no one greater than he. Lamartine said, I've got a half a dozen others and hundreds of others who put Muhammadur Rasulullah on top. But do you, O oh Muslim, do you believe he's, he's number one? Or you believe that corner Imam, there he's your leader and your boss? You are supposed to ask your heart about who is your leader. There is only one leader, that is Muhammadur Rasulullah. And therefore, through the love for Muhammad, we have to raise, we owe it to the world. We owe him to the world. Because he's rahmatun lil alameen. We've got him. We have to give him to the al alameen. Through his love, we have to raise every lowly being, every unbelieving being, every oppressed being to greatness, glory and fame. And we have to light this world too long in darkness with Muhammad's radiant name and is, as Iqbal says Quwwate ishq se har pasta ko bala kar de Quwwate ishq se har pasta ko bala kar de aur dehr mein ism Muhammad se ujala kar de Sallallahu ala nabiyyil kareem Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh